this is the uh, Soundtracks PC MIDI 32 from 1984. Lovely vintage console here. They did three formats, the 16, the 24 and this larger PC MIDI 32. This one is about 1500 millimeters long. It's 1.5 meters. Now you've got 32 modules on this console and each module can bring in two inputs what they call the channel input or line input and the monitor input or tape input. So we'll deal with the line input first. I'm going to explain this uh, assuming that most people don't know a lot about this particular console. It's similar to all of these uh, format 8-bus consoles uh, but I'll just go through the detail on this one. The Starting at the top of the strip we've got the gain pot here from minus 20 to plus 60 and we've got four band EQ uh, this is termed high and low shelf high shelf low shelf and two mid sweeps which gives you a huge amount of uh, control over incoming signals so you can really get tight in with the EQ depending on what instrument you're recording vocals mics guitars you know all this kind of thing so there's your EQ uh, this is the main fader, which is assigned to the mix, generally. Now this signal coming in can be assigned to the outputs. Um, this particular desk has got eight buses, and they're assignable on these switches here. So if you hit that switch down, you'll come, go out to one and two. Pan to the left for one, pan to the right for two. Well, that button down, three and four. Again, pan three, to the right, four. And we also have this bounce button, which gives you the true eight buses. So two switches down, going to four buses, bounce switch gives you five to eight. So those are your outputs from the fader, fed off this fader. That's the main input, the line input. You've got mic input if you have the switch in the up position, which is accessed by the XLR on the back here. There's your line input, there's your mic input. The other input is the tape input or multi-track return, same thing really. They also call it the monitor, just to confuse everybody. So we have the tape button down, we will be able to listen back to either a tape signal off multi-track or monitor. And that is uh, sent to the mix via this rotary pot here. There's no left right button, it just basically goes straight onto the mix with the rotary pot. There's your pan. Mute and solo same as the channel sorry I forgot to mention that mute and solo this particular desk has also got a mix switch here this flips the two inputs so you can have the monitor input on the big fader and the line input on the small rotary fader or down you flip them over it just gives you a, an alternative level control really the two signals are still coming into mix on the back um, the inputs we've got the line input here the tape input which would be a tape input or monitor or multi-track return in these days it will be your uh, your door your workstation tape out is the send out to the uh, multi-track machine is a direct out really so if you were going to a lot of people these days they just want to go straight to the door and you'd be coming out of that tape out but now there's your phantom power on or off switch, 48 volts for those condenser mics that require power. There's your mic input. Right, moving on to the centre section. The main mix, left and right faders here. You've got, on this particular desk, we've got control room. Uh, that's the speakers in the control room. Uh, the volume adjusters, this particular pot, is marked as monitor B. But that is basically your main control room feed. This pot um, is marked monitor A. In fact, it would be used for the studio, not the control room. The studio being where the musicians are. So I guess you'd be wiring that up to a foldback amp, really. The reason for that is on this particular desk, your talkback, which is this is the talkback button here. There's the mic. There's the gain goes to studio which is that button there so this will actually be going to the musicians talk to the musicians there's the main pot there um, 
they've also got solo adjust that is basically to adjust the level between the control room um, level and any channel that you soloed this just uh, gets a balance between the two levels so there's not a huge leap between levels so that's your solo adjust it balances up the solo against control room also on here we've got the um, two track returns so in the up position you'll be listening back to whatever's on the mix here the down position you're listening to two track returns a or b so that's two machines in the old days they'd be used for mastering machines dat machines they all used to use quarter inch machines the old revox you know um, those would be your mastering machines so you'd make your you'd do your master your um, mix and then listen back via the two track return buttons there on the back here we've got the um, I didn't mention the auxes did I sorry four auxiliary sends one two three four these are from the channels you've got four auxiliary buses these would be for your reverbs that kind of thing delays this would be um, to give the echo delays effects across the whole mix uh, I won't go too deeply into that, it gets quite complicated. Uh, I'm assuming at this kind of level you'll know all about that stuff anyway. Um, but there's plenty of material. If you look on Sound on Sound, it gives you there's some fantastic articles about mixing, using reverbs, delays and so forth. By the auxiliary buses. People get these confused with the effects. Effects sends and aux sends are the same. And then they also, the old desk, they used to be called effects returns or aux returns. But they're just inputs basically you've got these these are the sends the bus outputs and then effects returns of the returns back into the mix that's probably confused you even more isn't it anyway there we go four of them on this desk and also you can send um, the signal either sourcing it from the channel input or the line input or the monitor input or tape input um, the, using the switch here so in the up position they'll be going off the channel in down position they'll be going off the, the monitor or tape input and the same with these pair three and four up is for channel down is for monitor input okay so four auxiliary sends this this desk has got midi muting on it um, in other words these mute buttons will be sending out a midi note when they're hit which means you can connect the desk via these ports here to a multi-track um, sequencer package you know like Logic, Cubase and you can do remote muting which is quite nifty what have I forgotten? headphones this is coming out here this is your headphone socket here that is controlled by this pot so that doubles up as the main control room monitors and the headphones if you put a pair of headphones in there it will cut out the control room the MIDI muting which I briefly mentioned is controlled by this little panel here you can set up up to 30 patches so let's just put patch one in and we can make a little mute there patch we mute channel one and we store it we can go to patch two and put a couple of mutes in there store it and then we can flip between the inputs the the, um, the sorry the patches and we've got 30 patches so we can make uh, quite interesting little mixes using that it all helps keep the noise levels down and it's just sort of very basic automation really so there we are the PC MIDI 32 from soundtracks from studio systems in fact down here in Cornwall so I hope you enjoyed that one another one for the YouTube series thank goodness for YouTube eh? show the world what all this stuff is all about okay thanks for watching